So just um, before I forget it, uh, addition, there is a question about uh, additional resources. Um, I cannot, I don't have a book at, in, in mind at the, at the moment that I would uh, generally uh, uh, recommend for, for Monte Carlo methods, but, but of course there are lots of books on Monte Carlo methods uh, with specialized topics. Yeah? So, um, for instance, there are books by uh, for computational uh, Monte Carlo methods in finance, computational methods in uh, Monte Carlo methods in uh, I, I guess there's also one in astronomy and astrophysics. Um, uh, I'm there is one book of, uh, about Monte Carlo methods. Sorry, I, I don't uh, the the uh, name of the author doesn't come into my mind. It's a very fam famous book called the Monte Carlo method. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you will get uh, find uh, lots of resources. And of course, um, in, in the end of my uh, slides, there's a, a reference to PyMC. So this is a Monte Carlo methods in Python. And I, I think this is also a good, good starting point uh, to, to get deep, deeper insight into uh, Monte Carlo methods. Um, sorry, I should have thought about additional resources. Uh, I'm, I, my apologies. Um, so let's get back to, to Monte Carlo methods. I, I express this a little bit differently now. Um, so what we saw is in order to get one more digit correct, so if um, factor of reducing the fact uh, the the error by a factor of ten. So ten will be the square root of n. We need um, 100, 100 times bigger sample. This sounds a bit horrible eh? because for two digits, we need 10,000 more. Eh? And uh, for three digits, we already need 1 million more samples or 1 million times bigger sample. Um, this sounds terrible at, at first sight. And in some cases, it's, it's actually terrible. So um, um, there are many uh, scientists that uh, look down at you when you are uh, using Monte Carlo methods for uh, low dimensional problems, but um, I'm, I'm not one of them. I'm more pragmatic. And you, you, you see, uh, you saw that uh, it, it, it can be quite easy to implement a Monte Carlo method where you have to write many more lines of code in, uh, for, for different methods. So, um, but of course, we have integration rules like uh, Simpson rules or uh, integration algorithms that are better. For instance, um, if we take the uh, Simpson's rule, that is an error of order h squared. So the error is proportional to something like h squared, where h is the grid size. And the grid size on the unit interval is just 1 over n where n is the number of function evaluations. So if we want to evaluate a function at, uh, at a grid point, you have to call a, a function of this number, and, and that's a fair comparison. Um, you evaluate it either at, at these grid points, at these fixed grid points in the iterated sum, uh, Simpson rule, or you iterate it by plugging random numbers in, into the function. That, that, that's the Monte Carlo approach. And with the Simpson, Simpson rule, we uh, get an error of h squared, where h is 1 over n, so when we need n function evaluation. So we get an error, which is 1 over n squared, with respect to the uh, function evaluations. That means if we want to uh, get uh, reduce the error by a factor of 10, we have to increase the, the uh, we don't have to increase the number by a factor of 100, but by a factor of square root. Uh, of uh, of approximately uh, square root of ten, which is three, yeah, and th and this is much better. So three compared to one hundred, hmm? this is much better than the Monte Carlo error, uh, which is one over square root of n. This looks really bad for him, Monte Carlo methods at first sight, but uh, the world is not only. Uh, one-dimensional integration. And uh, you always have to pay a pr price when you want to solve higher dimensional problems. 
And this is called the uh, curse of dimensionality. And uh, the Monte Carlo method is one of, uh, of the best methods to cope with the curse of uh, dimensionality. So, uh, and, and this curse of dimensionality means that the uh, uh, number of function evaluations explodes when, that, uh, when you have to solve a high dimensional problem. So let's say we uh, stay on the unit hypercube. So in every dimension, we, uh, we integrate over uh, between zero and one. In first dimension, second dimension, until up to nth dimension. So we have a high dimensional function, and we want to uh, take the integral of this high dimensional function over the unit hypercube. So you have a big number of inputs, say 100 inputs, and you want to uh, take this 100 dimensional integral. You know? Try to do it by hand if, <laughs> if you want to get a feeling for the uh, problems. Ah, oh, sorry. Oh, was just I I think I haven't shared the uh, the uh, or let me see that was one okay so uh, a screen should be shared huh? um so. Uh, let's say we want to have uh, we want to com compute. Uh, this again is our one-dimensional problem. Error is decreasing like one over n squared. N is the number of function evaluations. How many functions e evaluations do we do we need if we have uh, have say a one-hundred-dimensional problem? 100 dimensional integral rather than a one dimensional integral. Um, one possibility one could think of is divide the hyper unit hypercube into smaller hypercubes with length n. And in every dimension, we have this integration method with order h squared, this, the Simpson rule. Okay, sounds sounds like a good plan. Let's look how how many uh, evaluate, function evaluations we need. So the number of grid points is proportional to one over h. Yeah? So, so h was one over n. So the number of grid points is one over h. Yeah? Uh, so the number of grid points that we have is uh, n to the power of d if we subdivide the interval into n equal subintervals. Yeah? So we need uh, one over h to the power of d evaluations. Then in every dimension, we apply this very beautiful Simpson's rule, which has uh, this favorable error of one over h squared. But this is one over n to the power of two over d. And this is really terrible. Um, for d equals four, that means for um, for a four-dimensional integral, this is already of the same order as Monte Carlo. Yeah? So th then we have uh, one over n to the power of two over d. Yeah? Square root of n is one, n to the power of one half. That means if d is larger than four, um, our Monte Carlo method is suddenly favorable. And for um, um, d equals to 100, the error decreases like the 50 through uh, 2 over, over 100, which is n to the power of 1 over 50. So it decreases like the 50th root of n. And this is uh, this means the, uh, the error does virtually no longer decrease. And 50, the, the 50 square root, it's much, much worse than the uh, square root of n. So, and, and this uh, um, makes the Monte Carlo method favorable for uh, larger dimensions. So as a, as a rule of thumb, as soon as you have uh, d equals to four, um, re re you tend to resort to something like Monte Carlo integration to solve your problem. There are competitors so-called uh, uh, quasi number generate uh, quasi Monte Carlo methods, but this is a topic for uh, for itself. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so for um, d equals 100, we have an error that decreases like the 50th root of, um, of, of n. And then to keep in mind that using 100 times more function evaluations will also make your code run 100 times slower. Uh, so you don't want, want to have this. And uh, this reduces the, the error by a factor of, yeah, so let, let's say we, we actually do take this algorithm and we increase our, we, uh, we decide that we will uh, take, make 100 more times more function evaluations. Then our error would decrease with the Monte Carlo method by a factor of 10. But with uh, this Simpson rule, it would decrease only by a factor uh, 0 0.91, which means less by less than 10%. Yeah? So where we reduce the error by, at the, with the Monte Carlo method by a factor of 10, the classical grid-based methods will re reduce the, uh, the error only by, by 10%, not by 1,000% like the Monte Carlo method. So with Monte Carlo, we get a 0 0.1 as a factor, which means a 90%, or well, it should better call it 90% error reduction. If you want to have this uh, reduction by 0 0.1 with regular grid, grid it means that you would have to increase your function number of function evaluations by a factor of 10 to the power of 50. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So the number of atoms in the in the universe is 10 to the something 78 or something, uh, that, um, and the number of molecules in 12 <laughs> uh, carbon are uh, is 10 to the uh, 23. So this is a ridiculously high number, completely unachievable. Even if we say we, we slice the hypercube in 100 dimensions in, in only two slices, it would still mean that we have uh, do, to increase the number of function evaluations by a factor of 2 to the 100, so 10 to the 30, which is still ridiculous. No? So that's completely unfeasible with uh, classical methods. So um, if you are looking in, into higher dimensions, for higher dimensional problems, Monte Carlo methods are not bad. They are actually really good. And they are so good that, that there are no, non uh, no known competitors for some problems. So some problems are almost intractable if you exclude um, Monte Carlo methods. Um, the, you, you still have this additional advantage that the, they are comparatively easy to implement. So, um, yeah, let's look into the, uh, to, let, let's practice it. Um, let's solve some high dimensional problems. And uh, what we can do, we can generalize the, this problem of computing pi or computing the volume the, the area of a circle. And this will be our test problem. So let's assume we want to compute the volume of the unit ball in two dimensions, um, in, in D dimensions. And uh, the advantage of this problem is that we know the solution. If uh, 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 what is a one dimensional ball is just uh, the interval from minus one to one that has length two. Uh, Two-dimensional, it's a volume of, uh, so, sorry, that's, that's the surface of the circle. And the two-dimensional volume is the surface. Uh, and uh, this is pi r squared, and for a radius of r, one, um, because unit ball means radius of one, uh, then we have pi as the volume. Three-dimensional, four pi over three times r cubed, formula you may remember from, from school. And uh, th this means four times pi over, over three is the volume. This looks uh, as if it was uh, steadily in 
continuously increasing, but it's not. Actually, the volume, uh, you, you can compute the volume for arbitrary dimensions, for 100 dimensions, 1 million dimensions, and it turns out that, uh, that it peaks at some point. So the, here's the compute, complete formula. Uh, the volume of the d-dimensional unit sphere, so you have, would have to multiply it by r to the power of d if you want to have the general volume of, of a sphere with radius, or of a ball with radius r. The volume of the uh, unit sphere is pi to the dimension divided by 2, divided by this gamma function of d half plus 1. And the gamma function is the, the function that we evaluated uh, before the break. And, it, and this equals to factorial um, for integer n. And it turns out, if you do the calculation, that this reduces to this uh, formula, formula to these value known formulas in, in the two and three dimensional case. So, um, since the, the gamma function is into implemented in psi pi, we can compute the, uh, vol the exact volume for comparison. So let's do that. Yeah? So we evaluate this function. So we, now we have a formula uh, computing the uh, exact volume. And now we compare this uh, with the Monte Carlo method. And the Monte Carlo method, again, is very easy to implement in this case. Yeah? So what, what we have to do is we do the same thing that we did in two dimensions. Uh, only uh, now in three dimensions or, or, or higher dimensions. No? So our situation is now, now this. So we have this ball. Uh, uh, that's, I, I, will, I will reduce it to a quarter, but we actually will. So we embed this in, into, the, into a cube and draw random, uh, random, uh, random numbers and look, look whether they are inside or outside the ball. Exactly the same as we did before. And what I, the, the code here shows, the, shows you the generalization, which looks, doesn't look much more complicated. So let's uh, stick to the two-dimensional case. And we start again with uh, uh, smaller numbers. So. Have a brief look at, at this case. We take uh, draw n random numbers, n times d, yeah? um, and then we uh, this means we get a matrix of random numbers, and every line every of the fix corresponds to one of the, the of the vectors. So we have to summarize over the row, and uh, oh, I get a notification that my I, I hope I, I can still be heard. Um, so my connection seems to be unstable. Um, so the, the number fits is we just check whether the, co, uh, the row sums of the squares are less than one. Yeah? So this means inside the ball or outside the ball. And then we sum up the number of fits and uh, have to multiply it not by four, but by a factor of two to the power of d if we are in d dimensions. So let's do it for uh, d equals two, yeah? So um, again, this should be, uh, we, we get the first, first uh, digit correct. And if we increase it to 10,000, we should get two digits correct. Sounds nice, yeah, looks nice. Um, for so this should be pi for for a two dimensional case for a three dimensional case it should be phi, uh, pi um, four pi over three here's the exit value four pi over three um, and if we increase the number of iterations let's make use of this nice property of 
uh, Python that we can add these. Uh, so for 1 million function evaluations, we get a pretty good result. Now let's increase the number uh, of dimensions. Five dimensions looks quite nice. 10 dimensions still not, looks nice. 20 dimensions, oh, this doesn't look that nice. 30, uh, let's, let's, take, uh, let's take 40 dimensions. This doesn't look nice and actually uh, maybe surprising for some of you, um, the volume uh, for, for one dimension, the volume is 2, for two dimensions, uh, the volume is pi, for three dimensions, pi, 4 pi over 3. Um, but here, this is this volume is tiny. It's not 4 pi uh, over 3 or some. It's definitely much, much smaller. And for, uh, let's say, 100 dimensions, um, it's 10 to the minus 40. That's ridiculously tiny. So... Obviously, we got a problem here. Yes, so we cannot do, do it this way. Our volume estimator is, uh, shows, or Monte Carlo method shows the volume is, is exactly zero. We have, in our one million attempts, we have zero hits. Why do we have zero hits? Because the surface is so tiny. And note that we have uh, multiplied it by Two to the power of one hundred, so it's it means that, that it's really really tiny. Um, so we had no hit at all in our unit sphere. So what happened there? So, and the the the, the answer is that the in in high dimensions the unit ball is actually tiny. Uh, here, if, um, oh. So this is not good to. I show you the results here on this on this slide. Um, No, it's not getting better. Um, but you see, it's 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 very very small. Uh, it's increasing up to dimension. Uh, so here we have um, one, two, three, four, five, and uh, starting from five, the uh, volume is going down. And you see, it's very very close to zero here. Um, let me get back. So this is a problem with my presentation. So sorry that you cannot cannot see it here completely. Here is it on a logarithmic logarithmic scale, um, and and here we are in the in the region of about one hundred. So you see, it's ten to the minus forty as we have seen. Yeah? So it's the the unit sphere is really tiny in high dimensions. So do we have to give up? Um, so zero is different from um, 10 to the minus of uh, 10 to the minus 40. Do we have still have a chance to compute this 10 to the minus 40? And it turns out that, that we can do it. Yeah? So what is the problem here? Um, the probability that, that we land a hit is tiny. So almost uh, uh, we, we draw random numbers between zero and one, and it's quite unlikely that if you sum these squares up, that, that they will be below one. You know, for, for instance, uh, um, if only 10 of them are bigger than uh, one half, um, 
Uh, so, so that that means uh, the, the square will be one fourth, and that, then 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 you are already exceeding the number of one. So if you think a little bit about it, you you find out uh, the probability to hit to land a hit is really tiny. So what what we are doing here is we uh, if if we go back to this probability formulation or this uh, probabilistic formulation. We are using a Monte Carlo method uh, estimator for, we're drawing on the, on the unit uh, sphere. So the inter integral is over the unit sphere. And um, the probability distribution is, a uh, probability density is one if the norm of X is less than one and zero other, otherwise. So this is, will be our probability, dis, dis, uh, our real probability distribution. We have the characteristic function over over this uh, unit interval. Uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, not the norm, the uh, absolute square, uh, because we are draw drawing on the unit uh, hypers uh, on the unit square. Uh, so this is not the Euclidean norm, but it's the uh, position on the um, x-axis. So what we can do is to uh, to draw uh, to sample from a wrong distribution, so uh, which is closer to the center of of the sphere. So we sample from a wrong distribution, with, which gives us much more hits. So we sample in regions where the distribution uh, where f is large, and since we are sampling from the uh, wrong distribution, we just correct it by a simple trick. Yeah? So, so um, our integral is, uh, has this form, yeah? where, where this p is just a constant over the unit sphere, uh, sorry, over the unit in, uh, interval. Um, so that's the characteristic function of the cube. Um, and what we do is we sample from a wrong distribution and take the expectation in the, of this wrong distribution, but we correct for that by uh, taking the correct distribution divided by the, the probability density of the wrong distribution. So th this uh, trick is called important sampling. So we draw from a distribution which is uh, um, Yields us, gives us more points in the interesting region where we don't have, have to evaluate zero. And we correct for that by dividing the real, and this is in, in, in our case, it's a constant one, dividing the real probability by uh, real probability density by the wrong probability density. Yeah? So the, these cancel out but we can rewrite it as an expectation under this probability density of f of x uh, times p of x divided by the wrong p w p uh, w for uh, the probability density of the wrong distribution. So that's a very simple trick. So in our case, how does it uh, transfer? We draw every component from a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one over D. This means that the expectation of the norm, so sorry, this is in, in our case, uh, this is really the norm of the vector. The expectation value of this vector is, is one. Um, what is the density of, of uh, this function? So the, the density of, of this uh, is a multivariate normal distribution. And this is the density of the multivariate normal distribution. For d equals one, you will probably be aware of that. This is this uh, nice bell shape, a uh, bell curved, bell curve, bell shaped curve, sorry. Uh, the um, Gaussian or normal distribution the density. Yeah? And, and this is the, um, D-dimensional generalization. And our Monte Carlo estimator then is just um, 
f to the uh, uh, xk, which this is just the characteristic function that count is zero if we have if we are outside the ball and one inside the ball. Yeah, so this this is easy. Zero outside the ball, one inside the ball. Uh, this is easy as well. So, uh, sorry, the uh, counter is easy as well. This is just one because we, uh, the probability density is constant. And this is uh, PW. This is the wrong probability di uh, distribution. So we have to correct our distribution by dividing by the wrong power, uh, distribution. And then taking the expectation values would cancel out and we get a Monte Carlo estimator. And here, here we have the, uh, uh, the complete implementation of this uh, that, that al will allow us to compute 100 dimensional integrals. So first, uh, here th this is the probability density of this uh, d-dimensional Gaussian, which is just making use of, um, of the standard exponential distribution function. And then we have to take the sum of the squares multiplied by d and so on, and then correct it by, by this factor one of uh, d half, uh, sorry, two n pi over d uh, to the power of d half. So our Monte Carlo estimator is now, um, we take our, uh, these random samples by computing this d-dimensional uh, uh, Gaussian distribution. And then we had to normalize the, this by square NP over square root of D. Uh, sorry, not NP, uh, by, by the square root of D. So we generate NMC d-dimensional vectors. And these are stored in the rows. Yeah? So every vector is in one row. And uh, then we count the number of hits by summing up the squares of the row entries. And if the squares of the row entries sum up to a value larger than one, we don't consider it a hit. If they are smaller than one, we consider it a hit. Yeah? And this can be uh, easily done with this. So this is a kind of if, uh, an, an if condition. Yeah. So it's zero. Yeah? So we test here for a, an inequality. And it's zero if the sum is um, bigger, and it's one if the sum is smaller. Then we store the, the then we look at the, those values that are hits, and we sum up the value values of the weighted sums. The weights are one over the wrong distribution. And we have to sum up these uh, the, the, our Monte Carlo estimator is just the sum of the weights. It's the, uh, so the, the sum of the inverse weights divided by the number of Monte Carlo samples. And this gives us an, an estimator. And with that, we will check first for, uh, again, let's go back to the uh, um, two-dimensional case. So just to check whether it's working. Yeah, and it should be something like pi, and it's, it's something like pi. Yeah? Stick to this. So for 1,000 evaluations, um, let's go to 20, which caused us uh, uh, started to cause us, us trouble. And you see, no problem with 20. Um, oh yes, uh, sorry, I exaggerated. Um, Oh, no, no, no. Uh, sorry, you have to compare compare these. Um, uh, th this is uh, the the last one is the ratio. Uh, so so um, should be something like if we hit it, uh, if we meet it exactly, it's one. If we don't meet it, uh, hit it exactly, it's uh, 
it's uh, less than one. Yeah? And, and you see already for 1,000 samples and, and 20 dimensions, which caused us lots of trouble in the, in the other case, uh, with the naive estimator, not without important sampling, uh, we get it surprisingly well. Yeah? So, and let, let's try higher dimensions, 40, and we still are, though, though we have, this means the uh, hitting probability is already one point in one billion, um, one point in or, or three points in one billion would hit. Or actually, it's it's even much less, um, and we have only one thousand uh, attempts. Yeah, and, and in these one thousand attempts, we hit hit it uh, surprisingly well, and we can in, uh, in, improve the prob uh, the uh, accuracy by taking a higher number of, of, of samples. So only with only 1 million samples, we can uh, solve this integral here very nicely. And uh, I think it should work also for the, yeah, for the 100 dimensional case, which was completely hopeless in our uh, previous implementation. So if you add a little bit of brain uh, or, or a little bit of thought to it, um, look, where was the interesting region that you want to in, in, in integrate? Uh, then you can improve the uh, results dramatically. So this is a, a very important method uh, called important sampling. Um, it's not com uh, completely generic. So um, you may have noticed I actually added some, some mathematical knowledge that uh, is not available. So it, it, for uni, for balls and normal distributions, everything is fine. But uh, uh, most of, or many of you will not be aware of this formula, how to generalize the normal distribution to n dimensions. Yeah? Um, because it's just not uh, your field in, in, in many cases. Um, and um, if we make it a little bit more complicated, we are all right, we are also leave the realm of my uh, mathematical co uh, capabilities, and um, uh, it, it's getting very complicated very early. Um, so um, I have only three minutes left. I will just give you a short uh, um, hint to what, what one can do. And this is Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. Uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods uh, do this, what I, I did manually, in a way, automatically. Um, I skip the rejection method. You can um, um, sorry, there's a bug in my, my slides. Um, I show it here. Um, what what these Markov chain Monte Carlo methods are doing is they explore the uh, the uh, they look automatically where is the interesting region in a way. Yeah. So um, if you want to in integrate this a uh, high dimensional integral, then you would have to. Uh, excuse me. It's better to, to see here. Um, let's say, let's say we have a, um, an integral of a function which looks like this, but much more complicated. So you want to, to sample uh, preferably in this uh, in the regions where f is large. Uh, assume that f is a positive function uh, um, or a non-negative function. It's not taking ne negative values. This is sufficient for many important cases. Yeah, so what, what can we do th there? The Markov chain Monte Carlo method, uh, the idea is you start somewhere and then you you draw the point into the regions. So you evaluate, uh, you make a random jump, evaluate 
am I getting uh, higher function values or am I getting lower function values? If you are getting a higher function value, then you walk towards the, this direction. If not, then you walk to, into this direction only with a certain probability. And you can uh, do it this way. It's explained in the rest of the text. I hope this will help some of you who are interested in this. If you do it uh, in the correct way, the distribution will be drawn automatically to and evaluate the integrals automatically in the region uh, where the function is interesting. And um, just a, a short example, let's assume that we uh, um, have a very crazy uh, distribution which looks like, like this, has a diamond shape. And um, I want to sample from e to the minus uh, this diamond shaped uh, modified in a way. Oops, oh, let me overwrite it. Um, I want to, to sample from a very complicated distribution that has this diamond shape described in the text. Yeah? And uh, we can do this with a Markov chain Monte Carlo method. Again, here's the complete implementation. Um, working also for very high dimensional integrals. So you start with a random point and then you are uh, drawn into the, the interesting region. Uh, so that's the, the idea. Details in the uh, accompanying text. Yeah? And I can show you what, what the uh, samples look like in, in this case. So we start here and you see that our samples will be drawn into, into this region and then you can get you know, your Monte Carlo est estimates there. So it's a kind of automatic uh, version of, uh, of important sampling. Um, way too brief, probably, to understand it, but um, I hope this will help, help some of you. Um, yeah, so I think I'm at the end of the, of, of the official session, but um, if you like, we, I, I would stay a little bit uh, longer for um, getting some questions. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, so first kind of question I see, um, is a greater sample a good thing always or not always? Um, it's, it's good since it, um, ah, okay, an interesting error. <laughs> um, Okay, maybe I can. Uh, so uh, the the advantage of big of a bigger uh, sample size is that um, that the error is reduced. And what we are doing with uh, um, with important sampling is to reduce the variance. So usually you go for uh, not for a larger sample size. You you uh, make the sample size as big as you can afford, as your computer resources uh, will allow you. Um, but uh, the usual way is not to increase the sample size to reduce the error, but to, to try to find um, um, ways to reduce the variance, like for instance with this important sampling. Okay, so that's one question. So maybe the, uh, this will probably refer to, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Andrew gave, gave a, a, already an answer to, you, to that. Probably the, the problem is uh, that you, uh, that matplotlib doesn't support LaTeX-like notation. Um, Maybe, so I think you refer to my, um, to, to the notebook that I provided. And um, there's one section. Uh, so maybe this does not work. Yeah, so um, maybe somewhere in the legends I used 
I used a lat LaTeX, uh, I don't see it where, where it is, probably it's a, it's a matplotlib error. I agree with uh, Andrew. So you can try to find a, a location where I have this, um, we have a backslash some, something inside the map, uh, in, in, inside the plot. And if you remove the backslash something, uh, the, the error should, should go away. That's the first aid, maybe. Okay, are there further questions? So I don't see any questions. Somebody aware of, of uh, other questions or did I miss something? Okay, so then I thank you for your attention. Um, my uh, um, email should be uh, available, or you can uh, look look my email up. I can uh, I, I will enter it in, into the chat. So if you would like to contact me, then write to this email. And I thank you for, for your attention and uh, wish you a nice uh, remaining summer school.